secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 458. This is your guide to the geek side, and I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, joined by Charlie Carden. Walking in a winter wonderland. Well, I'll be driving, but in hope, but hopefully not off a bridge. No, I'm good. There's a lot of snow here in West Michigan where uh, elsewhere in Michigan, they're like, it's raining. Oh, it's raining here and it's windy. We have like a, over a foot of snow. So uh, yeah, big thumbs down. And I have to travel for work uh, on a Sunday, which totally sucks. So this is the highlight of my day. Trust me. <laughs> you win. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are also joined by a special guest who's uh, been on the show before, so she's no uh, she's no uh, you know stranger to the fun and hijinks of Secret Friendship Night. That's Mrs. Kelly Gentner from <laughs> I'm going to screw this up. Uh, Phoenix Sisters cosplay. All right, welcome, Kelly. Thank you. I am coming from Hoth, also known as Wisconsin. <laughs> Hoth, Wisconsin. <laughs> Hothconson. Uh Wisconsin's clothes, moots outside shit hold you. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I did not I had power out last night, like I told you all off screen or offline. Um I did not have to kill a Tauntaun to stay warm last night, luckily. But the day is Jury's young. still out. <laughs> Days young, days young. So Tauntauns in the area. If uh, someone knocks on your door, it's probably a wampa. Don't let him in. Right, exactly. It'll be like the land shark. Candy Graham. He's like, he's like, I'm cold. Let me in. If it's cold for a wampa, then, you know, yeah. bad, bad juju. Forget about it. And Todd, cold, cold. yeah, you don't have any weather, but you got the cold, right, Todd? That's what you always say. You can't yeah, show like, the cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two inches, two inches of snow. Uh, that's about it. It's so weird. We've got like no snow this year. Last year, it was like negative 20. And we had like 30 inches of snow. So the world is a weird place. That's pretty intense. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know what's not weird is the wonderful people over at our Patreon. We even have one on the show this week. Oh, my God. Um, But as we talk about it every week, uh, these are the wonderful folks at kind of the top level of our Patreon that let us make all the extra fun content that we get to make. Kelly uh, is not only one of our great Patreons, but she was also actually on a yet to be released uh, second segment where we're talking about Buffy, the vampire slayer over on the Fast Keith Life. So I'm, I'm so jealous of that, Kelly. I oh love Buffy. <laughs> well, we can guide Charlie to the to the right side of maybe things. we can maybe we can pull todd in for it we've had todd on before with another person maybe we can do a three-part segment you know i'm not i'm not opposed I to it i feel like <clears throat> todd should join for our season two part two yeah we are have a season two part two coming up so we'll, we'll we'll get that scheduled here but at any rate uh as i mentioned kelly as part of the phoenix sisters cosplay is on our friends with benefits level along with john sedorf brendan myers asian sith mistress Awesome. Uh, Corey in HD, who is returning to us, and Matthew Keel, who is pretty new. Uh, BFF level, as always, is Sean, Stella, and Henry Nice, the great Nice family there in Minnesota. And my friend, Missy Merchant. We are very grateful for all of you. Please visit patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite for a seven-day free trial. Check out our content. If you like what you hear, please feel free to stick around. I was talking about my Facts of Geek Life show where uh, I take a classic genre show or sometimes a non-genre show. We pick a season. We pick a handful of episodes and then we just kind of break them down. Kelly's been on, Todd's been on. Todd and I do a great show called Spinner Rack where we take on a little arc of a comic book and talk about it. So we have a good time. So lots of great content uh, there. We've been doing it for about a year. So there's a lot of fun stuff to check out. Awesome. And just remember, Charlie, the more Patreons we get, that means that we don't have to launch an OnlyFans page. So, folks. Oh, you're right. It's keeping us off the now. Keep an, and 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 I apologize if I'm being offensive to anyone who has like like an innocent OnlyFans. Does not OnlyFans have like a good side where it's not just do they content? I thought if, I read that somewhere, but maybe that's a fallacy. If I anybody know. knows of a like wholesome OnlyFans, let us know. Wholesome fans? Oh no, <laughs> I, I said whole. Oh, oh geez, Todd, my goodness! Oh. All right, well, it's too moving, early for moving that. on. Oh, my God. Well, moving on, uh, we our comic cover this week is from the year of the birth of my dear old man. January of 1949 gave us Planet Comics. Not sure who the publisher is, Todd. You have to tell me about that. Uh, um, I will look it up. 
But uh, yeah, this is issue number, what the heck issue? We're at 58, sorry, I had to look because it's awfully small. 10 cents gets you 52 pages, probably uh, published quarterly, if I'm not mistaken. But we've got uh, a new adventure starring Hunt Bowman in The Lost World. This is very small print. I might have to, I might have to blow this up for my, for my old eyes. Oh, that's not Mista helping. of the Moon. Mista of the Moon, uh, which I'm pretty sure is a Fleetwood Mac song. No, that's Sisters of the Moon, sorry. Uh, Star Pirate and many others. Well, 52 pages. Now, so we've, uh, we have this, this nice young lady uh, wearing this outfit, which kind of looks like upholstery for an old couch. Uh, she, uh, a blonde lady, she's wearing a cap. She is also riding what looks maybe looks like a precursor to a snowmobile because it's got a track. It's a space snowmobile. But yeah, but it's shaped like Flash <laughs> Gordon's rocket ship. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. then you've got a dude shirtless, uh, but he's wearing a, a carapace. But his arms are, I'm trying to figure out, are his arms transparent? Or does his sword like show you how powerful his bones are maybe anyway purposes no shirt and he's swinging it at a uh a guy who i kind of get the fit well he's wearing a hat similar to ming the, the merciless. Girls. yeah the, the yeah the uh, the gal right ming the merciless there you go but he is wearing yeah a green shirt with a red sash and he's shooting uh our guy right in the face uh but obviously it's not a big deal so yeah, so all right, so give us a breakdown. So yeah, the uh, what what's the story with this? Where did they come? So from? Uh, the publisher was called Fiction House, oh, um, okay. and uh, the fun part about this comic was basically in the Lost World, Hunt and Lissa battle wild horses and aliens gone amok to save the food crops of future Central Park. The Star Pirate is intrigued by efforts to revive the hibernating crew of a Venusian spaceship, and Mista is enlisted to help evacuate a pl prison planet. But the convicts have other plans wasn't mr mr wasn't that a show from the 90s on the, on the i don't know but 52 pages full color oh very um, nice so good job guys i mean very nice that's a that's a lot hey. of entertainment that's uh less than uh half a half a half of a penny what's uh what's 52 cents divided what, what's 52 pages divided by 10 cents math me 0.05 0.05 0.05 cents per page be math Ah, uh, that's why I made him do it. Todd, that's Todd's. Uh, Todd's we're arena. geeks. We're geeks. We're supposed to be good at math. No, that's no nerds. Nerds, 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 nerds. nerds at math. Yeah, geeks, geeks are, are not yeah. good at anything except for bringing up irrelevant facts. Um, actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> push up your glasses. Oh uh, yes. Oh wait. Oh, oh, there you go. All right. Well, that's someone who my head is filled with. <laughs> exactly facts. we are wealthy in uh, uh with, with really fun trivia it's embarrassment of useless knowledge anyway someone who is both a nerd and a geek and still kicking it at 124 years young talking about our senior nurse news correspondent about to be a major movie star in about a month uh when the madam web film comes out we are talking about our senior news correspondent madam web down at the corner of hollywood and vine with all of our latest scoops so let's go for it now it's time for madam webb's rumors and news take it away boys thank you madam webb Madam Webb perked up when she heard OnlyFans. Uh, she has a new website that she's on. It's called OnlyFan because she can only find one person oh. that wants to see her on a regular basis. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, literally. because well, she's Madam so Webb has found the fountain of youth, though, now. True. <laughs> because she's now so. Dakota Fanning, right? Or not Dakota Fanning. Uh, Dakota Johnson. There we go. The Apparently, that was the that was like in her rider. She's like, I get to pick a person who's playing me. And there you yeah. go. She saw Fifty Shades of Grey. She's Fifty like, Shades of Web. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, well, something that's not quite so humorous uh, is <laughs> this the trailer for this film. And Todd, you dropped this on our Discord earlier this week. I will admit... I think I watched it a couple of days later, but it was it was with the sound off, which was like, all right, well, the first minute of the trailer is kind of like, oh, there's a bunch of people talking and somebody abducts a kid who's a ballerina. And you're like, oh, this looks terrible. How sad. I hope nothing happens to the kid. But then we get to this is like a probably a two and a half minute trailer, right? You get at least a minute or a minute and a half in. And that's when all the talking stops and you find out that the kid is. Big old scary Fire. vampire. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I think she's so just got bad teeth. I think she's just so happy. She's just got bad teeth. 
She's spending all her, nice. all her money on the ballerina lessons. Oh my goodness! Which so yeah, so she's because her dad's a dentist. So why does she have? That? Oh, that's true. Oh boy, a bad a dentist. dentist. He's a dentist. He's a bit. Her dad's a billionaire. Oh, my yeah, God. a billionaire dentist. Yeah, I was gonna say, Correct. you know, I I know a lot of oh. dentists and they do well. My daughter actually just uh, just started dental school uh, last well, week, so I guess it's a big industry. But anyway, people. their last name is Invisalign. Oh, so gotcha. It's, it's Abigail Invisalign. She's a part of the, the Invisalign <laughs> fortune, the dynasty. Oh my goodness! But we kind of got a cast of millions here. So Todd, I know right off the bat, uh, Kevin Durand uh, is a that guy actor uh, that you've seen a lot of stuff. Of course, you got Giancarlo, Giancarlo Esposito, who is famous for Star Wars and Breaking Bad, many many other things. And then it's filled with a lot of that guys. So it's like, hey, it's that guy, and it's that uh, the blonde gal is really somebody I've seen in a lot of places. Um, the, the new one, Lang. yeah, 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 the new, yeah, there you go, and yeah, the um, oh, the new Cassie Lang, she, she was uh, with the blonde hair threw me off. Um, the uh, the woman wearing the mask who goes to speak to Abigail was in the uh, Scream film, she was the one who just got fired for uh, controversy, saying something controversial, she got kicked off the lace. Well, that's the sister, right? The sister is the one, yeah. the, the older sister is the one that got fired, or well, oh, I thought I thought it was this one, differences, uh, yeah, so and this is by the the directing team, um, I I believe called Radio Silence, who directed Scream, the, Six, the last yeah. two Scream films. The last and two films. Yeah. and the uh, Ready or Not, which is a movie that we just watched recently that April absolutely loves. Great yeah. flick, yeah. absolutely great flick. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, this is nuts. When uh, this and when when does this drop? Uh, uh, April nineteenth, so oh, okay. right after my birthday. So that I'll is be and that is that. that is my son's birthday. Right. He'll be twenty four. Um, yeah, very exciting. Happy birthday. Um, so yeah, I love it. You know, first quarter or first part of the year horror movies. Uh, some of them really do get legs and take off, as we found, because we're like, you know, you tend to think about that stuff in September, October. Um, but really, horror works kind of any time of the year because it's it's a fun romp. Never makes any sense um a lot of fun interplay with these guys like how do we kill a vampire and then uh Catherine newton's like well are we talking twilight are we talking true blood are we talking what's the third one she, there's always a third thing what's the third thing she mentioned the third vampire something i forget now uh what? the kate beckinsale one we couldn't remember charlie oh god yeah it could be world. the what world those movies are Underworld. Is Underworld. Underworld. We really struggled with that in our last episode. We we talked like about it for Overworld? about thirty. Se- we talked about it for like thirty seconds, and we we never even came close. But anyway, yeah. um, th- this is this is a for sure go see for us because we love movies of all kinds, good, bad, or indifferent, mostly indifferent. <laughs> uh, Kelly, now you said you're not big into horror, so uh, would you like see this film? I'm not big into horror, but um, I love vampires, mm. and I'm picky about my horror. So, but this also, I love the twist in this one. So I also don't love movies where kids are put in danger. Right. So at first I was like, ooh, ooh. no, no yeah. a kid be. But the moment where the kid was like, "I'm sorry for what's about to happen to," you, I was like, yeah. "Yes, what a mm. twist!" Right. So what a scoop. Yes. <laughs> and oh. I love the line, and the, line the, the, ta- the law, the, you know, the tagline at the end is like, I love to play with my food. <laughs> ah, hey, oh, yeah. Yeah. She, uh, I mean, this, and this was, this was a red band trailer. So a lot of swears, uh, a lot of grisly violence and blood splatters. Uh, the, uh, Abigail takes a uh, headshot and just goes, bloop, <clears throat> wipes it off and is like, going back for more so yeah and i love it yeah that you like to your point they're talking about like well is in and i love the fact they're in the real world and they do know vampire troops it's not like what is this thing i've never seen i don't like understand people, never heard of them yeah it's like z- zombies you know we don't call them zombies. we're walkers they're you know yeah i love the yeah. fact that they are in the fact that they it's kind of like scream where they're like right. are well aware of all the tropes and everything yeah. right so, so horror fun. Horror comedy, but obviously pretty yeah. grisly. So, well, this should be fun, and I can't wait uh, to talk about this on the show because Todd, you'll you'll see it as well, I assume. Oh uh, yeah, I mean it's perfect time. Uh, I I love uh, when we drop a horror film like outside of the normal time too. Yeah, it yeah. breaks things up. Um, so yeah, good time for it too. Good deal. All right, well, moving on, Todd. You and I debated this program in season one, which was my God, has it been two years, wasn't this? Yeah, in twenty one. Yeah. Um, but uh, because again. I was coming from a place, not a gamer. You were coming from a place, very serious gamer. And the gamer community was a bit down on it. 
I, as a non-gamer, just kind of enjoyed it for what it was. But why don't you tell us about uh, <laughs> Master Cheek Season 2? <laughs> yeah, so Halo 1, <laughs> yes, Master Cheeks, that's what I've deemed him because he is, Kelly, you'll love this, he actually is nude a lot in the show, and that's one of the of things butt. that... Master Chief is like the super soldier who raised his children. Yeah. yeah. And they're supposed to never take even off their helmets. But man, well, Master Chief's like, screw it. Screw it. I'm taking everything off. Look at my butt. Yeah. I mean, it's not. Yeah. It, and you make it sound like he's just you see his ass in every episode. I just don't feel like it was that much. But good news is, spoiler alert, it's nice ass. I can say that. It's not sexual. <laughs> exactly. And this the guy who plays him was in Orange is the New Black. Um, yeah. So, uh, he was, uh, porn stash. Porn stash. Yeah, Orange is the New yeah, Black. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, the positives. The, I think the show is uh, acted well. The budget's not the greatest, but they do well with what they have. And the in this sh- series is not canon. It's called, they called it the Silver Canon line. It's kind of like the Star Trek. Uh, oh, like Kelvin. Uh, yeah. they, it's it's essentially Kelvin. Yeah. Trek, yeah. yeah. So uh, it kind of frustrates a lot of core fans because they feel like, well, it's not what I want. But they're like, they already told you this is not going to be the same. So season one is like a prequel where it tells you about everyone, kind of sets everything up. So I think that was the other problem. It took forever to get where we want to go. And yeah. and that's kind of where we're headed. So uh, essentially, we ended where we finally have the Covenant, who's the big bads that are going to now strike, make their presence known to um, all of the colonies of Earth. And the big part of this show is called the Fall of Reach. So Reach is this, this, this planet. Jack Reacher? We, oh, yes. Nice. So, so the, the, the humans have colonized it. And uh, it's, it's whispered about that this was really the start of the, the war with the Covenant. And in the Fall of Reach is huge. It's like this is what decimated humans, put us all on our you know best behavior uh, to go out and take on the Covenant. So that's what this is all going to be about. And there was actually a Halo Reach game the same way. It was all about you were in there and the game ends on a, on a downer. Essentially, everyone dies. And that's the thing that makes me excited about this because we know where it's going. Kind of like... Um, uh, Rogue, uh, um, Rogue One. Rogue One. Yeah, like Rogue One, where mm-hmm. you know it's not going to go well. So this is kind of like the Empire Strikes Back of Halo, mm-hmm. and it, but it means a lot to fans, and I'm excited to it because, as you've seen in the trailer, there's a lot more action. Uh, there's a lot of like uh, big moments in this, so I think that's what the fans will bring everybody in. And Charlie, I think you'll love it because yeah. you like the first season with its troubles. Oh, no, totally. And, and Kelly, you're the one who said I don't care about Halo. You saw the trailer. Did it change your mind at all? Yeah. Yeah. Break it down. It looks pretty interesting. It looks very space opera. Which right. I'm, I total, total Star Warsy. I thought, you know, look very Coruscant and, you know, very much like Mando, you know, and some of the dark spots that he went to. That was the first vibe I got when I was watching it. And I can, so I can understand why they would break the rule about not taking your helmet off because that makes it really hard to, like Mando ran into that with him not taking his helmet off. It makes it hard to show emotions. It's hard when you're translating it into a series. It's just, it is a challenge. I so, mean, Pedro Pascal's not even in, in that show anymore. I mean, it's just, he just, he's Darth Vader now, you know, cause they've just got some other yeah. dude wearing the suit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Which is, that's why Pedro Pascal is in, everything right exactly he's got lots of time that's why he's gonna maybe now be reed richards that's another rumor that's for that obviously we're not talking about it because it's not been confirmed but that's yeah. a rumor that's going around pedro pedro essentially in five hours knocks out a whole season he's done yeah exactly <laughs> he moves on <laughs> well like i said he moves on to his next show where he has to save a child from danger that's his entire career <laughs> his brand he is just Grumpy dad. Grumpy dad saving the world, saving a kid. Sad dad. Oh, that's know. a new genre. That's the genre that everybody loves. Sad dad. That's very yeah. true. That's a very big genre now. Which is so funny because he's he's not a dad. Oh. And he's not sad. He's a very happy, enjoys. He person. is. He is very genial individual. So yeah, that's funny. That's that's real acting, oh. man. That's real acting. So well, cool. And so so Todd, are we? Uh, do we? I, I was looking. Do we get a date at the end of this one? Or February eighth. So it's very oh, soon. It's like right after the Super close. Bowl. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, good deal. Good well, deal. Kelly, All right. I would well, say if you're if you're curious, watch a season one recap like those that are like an hour long. Tell you what you missed or less than that. And if you are interested, okay. But there, are there cheeks in the season one recap? 
Uh, you could I, probably I, look that up somewhere <laughs> if you wanted to. Yeah, if you ju- just 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 Google Master Cheeks, you'll get there. Yeah. Exactly. Oh man. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna rely on uh, Kelly a lot for this next one because your cosplay partner is a very big Supergirl person, if I'm not mistaken, and you're a big Superman person. Just House of L kind of thing happening, but we're getting some some hints for screen tests for the new James Gunn DC Universe. Uh, portrayal of Supergirl. Um, some names that that I don't know. I, I probably if I scroll down, I'll, I'll recognize faces. But uh, we're getting names like Millie Alcock, Amelia Jones, and Meg Donnelly swirling around in the mix. So Kelly, talk to us about Supergirl. What? Where are you at with this? I mean, looking at these faces, what do you think? Um. So yeah, I'm not familiar with those names either. But I so far. Every casting announcement for that movie has been a hit for me. So I trust James Gunn. I mean, I'm cautiously optimistic because <laughs> DC has not been has not done well in the live action. But they're, I really they're want on the ropes, to get yeah. Superman right. We haven't had a good Superman film since the Reeve films. Oh God, true. And not even all the Reeve films, just let's just stick with Superman Superman 2. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I I love the third one, but I don't think it's widely considered to be great, but I'm a huge Richard Pryor fan. The third one's one's fun, but it's not a good film. That was the only one one that didn't have Lex Luthor in it, too. That's funny, right? That was, yeah, because your villain was, what's what's his face, the corporate spokesman guy? Robert Vaughn. (laughs) Robert Vaughn, yeah, exactly. That movie also gave me my first real scare in a movie when i was a kid when the when the sister the oh. robert Vaughn's sister gets snagged by the ropes and she gets robot eyes robot that, scared, yeah. that scared the shit out of me the movie came out in 1983 i think that's so why i was seven. Oh yeah that really scared me my goodness and um I talk your ear off about how superman is still relevant today totally people are like oh well superman's not relevant but okay so well, do you want me to talk your ear off about it, or should we say? Well, I think actually that would be. I think Charlie, we we don't always have an extra guest on Spinner Rack, but I think we could do a special on Superman. Yeah, maybe talk about some stories that where Superman has been excellent and people need to know about. So I think that would yes. be a good. Let's content. book it. Save we'll say we could really go all the, in. We'll save it for the Patreon. Good news is if I didn't mention it, our Patreon uh, and cause I, I, I do it and Todd do it. Those mm-hmm. older episodes do find their way onto our network feed eventually. Absolutely. So even if you don't end up partaking of the Patreon someday, you know, you might c- certainly hear that conversation, but yeah, Todd. Uh, so yeah, I, I scrolled down to the picture. I do recognize the woman on the extreme right as being the, younger version of one of the main characters i'm forgetting the names of the characters on this reyna targaryen on hot d house of the dragon and then the other two women are familiar ish the the blonde woman with the very formidable eyebrows she looks super familiar she was Uh, in uh that disney zombies uh so if you know those zombies the the uh, kelly do you know the zombies series on disney watch it but it's goofy also, disney zombies sounds so so sanitized Ooh, they're disney zombies it really is the zombies <laughs> are are yes they're dead but they're just green and people don't green. like them it's kind of like class culture yeah yeah and, exactly. and, I, and they I, sing and dance oh delightful i and millie alcock is the one all the way on the left and i'm not an, no it, right not ringing a bell right. oh my, all the, way my to the right the one on the on my left as i'm looking i'm sorry in red with the dark hair no that nope. the one to the right is the young princess uh, from Hati. You and I are looking at it backwards. The one in the red dress with the dark hair is the is one that I'm not, is okay. Then then the caption is reading it. The caption is flipped Correct. around. It is it, opposite. Yeah. Yes, it's opposite. Well, that must so, be that must be Meg Donnelly then, and I'm not not from. It is Meg Donnelly. Yeah, Meg Donnelly. Donnelly. I could not tell you what she has done, but the funny part is, um, oh wait. Donnelly she's uh, in the zombies thing. zombies okay I'm wrong but she has played Supergirl the voice actress of Supergirl in oh, uh, the DC go. animated film Legion of Superheroes and Justice League Crisis on Infinite Part- Earth Part 1 which actually just dropped so uh, maybe I'm completely wrong um because they yeah they have them completely out of order in the picture <laughs> right yeah good, good, good great work guys you had one job um yeah <laughs> the guy writing the slug line yeah um, so uh that would be M- Amelia Jones is the brunette I believe Okay, gotcha. So, yeah, this film, uh, Superman Legacy, is going into production this spring in Georgia with, of course, David Cornsweet in the titular role. Uh, Rachel Brosnahan, who I'm forever in love with, is Lois Lane. Nicholas Holt, Lex Luthor, 
and yada 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 oh isabella merced who's on the rise a star on the rise right now and of course nathan fillion as metamorpho isn't he the guy he's kind of gray and red and green and he's all stretchy am i thinking of the right DC metamorpho character? is the man that has all the elements oh okay I gotcha Nathan Fillion was gonna be guy gardner he is gonna be guy gardner Oh, then this is wrong, too, because it says, <laughs> oh, wait a second. No, it gives the names and it says playing respectively. OK, very good. Oh, so yeah. Metamorpho will then be S Anthony Kerrigan, Isabel Merced, will be hot girl. OK, yeah. well, you know what? I guess not only are they having a problem with their slug lines, I do not like to read complete sentences. So we're, we're in great shape. We're in yeah. great shape. So what we'll do is there, there's always links to the articles we talk about. So folks, decide on your own if we're completely wrong. J just um, don't. Just don't. Yeah. Skip yeah, it. Um, and and uh i i don't know if you've read the the comic uh was it supergirl um the one that we read the, yes the one we read uh i can't remember the title of it but it was it kind was of excellent it was kind of saucy supergirl on an adventure oh, yeah supergirl woman of tomorrow so there that's what go. the mo that's what the movie is going to be based on with supergirl it's one of the best stories i've read uh it's it's fantastic so if you have not read it i think that's what they're going for that tone it's okay. gonna be awesome gotcha well that's that's really where gun lives is in that kind of yeah. so because that comic had kind of a guardians vibe ish i thought without a doubt so definitely yeah. got the job done all right well moving on to something that todd will where kelly you're gonna have to help me out here because this is todd tends to get a little unhinged when star wars comes up uh so I'm, we might have to put a clock on him like all right todd 15 seconds keep rambling sounds great but anyway uh it's no small news that there was an actual official announcement and again it's about star wars star wars movie announcements are kind of like uh potato chips you can't have just one and after you eat one you forgot that it exists because it goes away um but yes they announced a new film called the mandalorian and grogu or is todd has very effectively dubbed it the grogu lorian i love it boom uh from director john favreau now john favreau of course co-created the series he's happy hogan from the mcu he started the mcu by directing iron man 2008 um i am and i'll mention it the geek easy that i'm on a star wars kick right now kelly i have talked to you later about a little photo shoot i'm trying to plan for the spring because i'd love to have you drive over to michigan but more on that later um yes. but yes so, and then this is also intermingling with rumors that this film, which even if it went into production later this year, is probably two more years away, so 2026 at the minimum, um, scatterings of rumors of, well, we might try to sneak in a super quick season four of Mandalorian to tee it up, and the same in the same breath, they also announced that, announced that Ahsoka is coming back for a second season. So, uh, why don't we give Todd a chance to get his bit out of the way, and then we can hear from Kelly. What do you think? So, it's funny, because I think I think even John was confused. He thought this was the Filoni movie. Right. That's so fair. Because that, that's three, gotten the most... There's four. That's gotten the most press. Yeah. Um, because... You know, Ahsoka wrapped up on a cliffhanger and Mando season three really didn't. He's just kind of chilling there. And then, uh, you know, Book of Boba Fett is out there and, you know, other programs happening. So, um, but yeah, this this really did end up kind of coming out of nowhere. So, Todd, as the, the ever-loving yeah. Star Wars skeptic, where do you land with this information? I truly think this is season four of Mandalorian. I don't mm -hmm. think you're going to get I I think you would, uh, quite honestly, I think you would water down the property to go to a film when you say here's four seasons and then here's the movie. I think this is why they left season three the way it did where it's kind of like it's status quo. Yep. Nothing's we're going on there. Gets Something will drive them to have an adventure. Mm -hmm. And, and what I'm hopeful is that this adventure will not be tied into the air to the empire stuff. It'll just be, it'll feel like more, most more of the original seer seasons where it's just like, all new people. We don't know anything. They're just going on an adventure. It's self-contained. And we, yep. they don't have to feel like, oh, by the way, did you see all those other seasons of all those other shows? Did, did yeah, you, you see the, watch those? Did you see the Clone Wars? Did you? Did you? Did you? <laughs> or Ahsoka or Boba, Boba yeah. Fett or all those. So I'm hopeful it will be self-contained, a fun adventure. Um, and it will have probably maybe more like in the Yoda quest scene where it's like, maybe it's a quest to find like, his genealogy of Grogu, yes. where you he mean, came from. Yeah. yeah, Grogu, like, hey, we found, you know, somebody found a clue on this planet and blah, 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 in the such and such sector that this is where the Yoda species, the Grogu species came from. Yeah. And yeah. let's go check that out. 
because we've obviously gone through the past of he doesn't want to be a he doesn't want to be a Jedi. He wants to follow the Mando. So I'm I'm fine with that. But it would be cool to, for him to find more of his heritage, more about yeah. his culture, I things agree. like that. Because because if it's an adoption story, if anybody knows anything about uh, when you adopt a child from other cultures, that typically the ones that are the parents that are really respectful of their children, they try to. Uh, get more of their it's, culture. Yeah. Try to yeah. introduce. Yeah. I, have, I have friends of the family. They've adopted Korean kids. They go to Korea every year, so their kids can. They actually help their kid find their adopt uh, their the birth mother, which was wow. amazing. My so, yeah, my friend uh, Tamara, who has been a friend of mine almost my whole life, she has an adoptive Korean daughter. Uh, Tamara still does a video every year that they send back to the birth mother. It's just it's and and she sent her to Korean camp all while she was growing up over in the trade area with other kids from Korea. So it was uh, yeah. So yeah, you're you're totally correct. So yeah, you know what, Todd, you you kind of you kind of pulled me out of left field on that one. I like your idea. I'm impressed. I'm yeah, impressed I, with I, with the, with the, the no. You, you you didn't you didn't yuck it. So good for you. Well, good and, and for I'm, you. I'm fine if then they come back and join everybody in the the, 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 the Filoni Filo movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because totally. I, I just hate it when there's so many. That's my biggest problem is that with the Filoni movie, I'm going to worry that it's like it's going to be 85 characters. Easter how does City. anybody get any time? Yeah, it's going to have any character development. It's just going to be a bunch. It's going to feel like the rise of Skywalker, oh. which meant like it was like that was a five hour movie they put into two. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Bigger story here. So, yeah. Kelly, uh, you are, of course, a Star Wars fan. What, what's your vibe? Yeah, I agree with that. And. It's kind of, it's similar to the problems facing the Marvel Universe right now, where you have to do homework before you can enjoy any of the movies. And that hurts me to say, because I love the Marvel Universe. Yeah, it's just too big. But you you can't sit down to enjoy a movie anymore unless you've watched, like, 50 shows. And um, so I agree that the beauty of The Mandalorian is that if you've watched everything that comes before... You enjoy the little Easter eggs that, you know, are in there and it's rich with the lore of the Star Wars universe, but it's also just like a Western in space and mm -hmm. they're doing their thing and they just, so I agree that I, I don't, I don't want to see Grogu and Mando on the big screen. I want to see season four. I want to see what they're doing. I want to see them doing their own thing that, you know, maybe we get a little bit of crossover with other characters, but I don't need to see a whole bunch of lore that I'm like right having to watch all the other series which yes I am watching the other series and, but... and, a, lo and a lot of us have but again Todd you and I've talked about the quadrants right what you really want to do is touch the normal people out there who maybe are like oh baby Yoda's cute like my wife is a huge Star Wars fan but baby Yoda she gets sucked in and of all of Star Wars why there's a cute droid there's the Ewoks there's you know Grogu there's blah 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 um but you you need more people who are of that like well I'm kind of casual Star Wars but I ended up watching the Mandalorian because it's on Disney plus and that's what I know so that's what I can enjoy you know, and that's how they're going to have a hit movie, like a something going beyond just absolutely. You know what? What us? You know, hardcores really dig on. Yeah, if you want to bring in everybody, you make it a, as streamlined as simple as possible, right? Uh, and then you, then you really can bring home the big money. Which Disney? Why? This is why Disney's doing this. This is the biggest home run they can do. It's very easy because people. It's a property. They don't have to worry about like. Uh, pissing off fans really i think everybody will be in this that likes it and i think this is where you get people back to the the theaters to see star wars and disney is doing this because they realize streaming doesn't make them money um right but movies do and then they can right. get more subscribers when the movie hits disney plus so it's right. it's it's it, people are going back to the old ways where it's like yeah right. Yeah. Show, showing you that the entertainment industry is a is is the big wheel of time it's the wheel in the sky baby cue the song so uh finally uh we're getting into a show that i am completely obsessed with talked about it last week on our 2023 wrap up we just did a a, a watch through to the point that to the point that is good timing because we watched a cutscene movie of uh, which i've watched before battlefront 2 because april and i were doing some costume talk and planning for a photo shoot and then she said you know what i'd love to see a cutscene thing of is the last of us 
it's it's between three and five hours long, depending on the, cut of the game fine of the game. Yeah. So we're oh, okay. watching the th- three hour version. We're almost done with it. But yeah, totally obsessed with The Last of Us. Uh, again, Pedro Pascal, uh, grumpy, grumpy, sad dad rescuing a kid from a world of disaster. Um, so, Todd, now we're getting into the season two, which is the second game, which you forewarned me is even more heartbreaking. So tell me about this news. Holy cow. Yeah. And this is very exciting. And I am curious how they're going to approach uh, part two, because part two is essentially two stories um, that kind of parallel each other. So they could break it up and season two could be like one story season and or they could alternate. So I'm curious how they're going to do this, because see, there's no loss of us part three. <laughs> so because of that. I don't know if, and I know they would love to have more seasons yeah. of the show. So I'll be curious how they do. They were supposed to have a Last of Us like multiplayer online game with story and everything. That's been canceled. Ooh, so, yeah. um, and typically these games take anywhere from five to seven years. Well, the last one came out in 2020. Mm-hmm. So that would mean the earliest would be 2025 unless they share the the story. Like they could do a Game of Thrones where they share like, this is what we're going to do. Um, and since the creator of game uh last of us is a writer and part of the show too that could work because he said this is what we're gonna do um and so this is this is uh you know part three but i can guide you through it because it's not like uh george r R. martin was there you know writing the show as it went along uh this is a completely different experience so i think this could be successful but the cool part about it is we have three new cast members that have joined the cast so uh one of the big ones is a character named abby Caitlin Deaver is playing her. Now, Abby is known in the game is someone who is a lar- like a large physical presence. That is part of her nature. She is imposing. She views her body as a weapon. So yes, she she works out. She is she wants to be prepared for the worst. And Caitlin Deaver is not. So so it will be interesting. I'm sure she can find a, a coach hey. like. You're talking about like Tom Cruise, Jack Reacher versus Alan Richson as Jack Reacher. Well, she, well, no, <laughs> she's going for Alan Reach, Alan Richson. Right. That, no, that's uh, yeah, my point. Yeah. That's a, but it sounds like, yeah, a Caitlin Deaver is potentially not Alan, Alan Richson. Correct. But <laughs> she can find a fitness coach and get her right. ripped and it'll right. be fine. Rip it uh, up. So, so that is one of the characters. I don't want to give you any like. I don't want to give you any information about Abby. You'll find it Please. out. And you'll be very so, but um, unless you want to watch the 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 cinematics of season two, that's up to you too. Um, no. So that's one of the characters. Then we have Dina, another character. Uh, she's one of Ellie's closest friends in the sequel, played by Isabel Merced. On she, fire. She Is- yep. Isabel Merced's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and she was in that door in the Lost City of Gold. I've heard that's a fun movie. Oh, it so totally to is. That. We saw it. We yeah. saw it. Yeah, it was. It was totally fun. Yeah. Um, and then we have um, beef star young Manzino, who's going to play Jesse. Um, and he's part of the community within uh, The Last of Us Part Two. And I don't want to give anything more. These are great cast members. I'm very excited. Uh, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be a long time. It's probably in 2025, I believe, is when the show is coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, gotcha. Kelly, um, Last of Us. I just got HBO Max back, so I'm going to be binging it. Please. Oh, my God. Get ready for I'm the sorry. tears and the emotions and the emotions <laughs> and the tears. Yeah, it's um, it rocked me. That last episode in particularly rocked me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was it's it was very reminiscent of something else that we've seen Pedro Pascal do. So that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. And did you see that um, uh, that Nick Offerman won an Emmy? For yes, his his his, his, yeah, his role in that. that. Good for him. God, oh, that was such a wonderful episode. Made me fall in love with Linda Ronstadt all over again. Because yeah, and he's the future president of Civil War. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Kelly, I don't know if you've been following, but this movie coming up in April about uh, uh, civil war, uh, about a, a modern day civil war. Um, yeah, just go back and just Google it. Trust me. Holy he cow. essentially plays uh, President Trump. Is all. I'll yeah, say. exactly. With with better hair. With better hair, exactly. um, <laughs> no mustache though. So what no, the hell? My, oh my goodness! Um, so yeah, like you said, season three. If if you're really uh, telling us that the the, the the second game has two parts, then you, I'm sure you can absolutely count. Well, the, the structure feels like it definitely could be two parts because gotcha. that's the way right. it kind of plays. Yep. Gotcha. Well, good. Well, I uh, look forward to this, but I don't look forward to the fact that it, they start oh, production. Sounds like in a couple of weeks. Heart. 
Uh, oh, well, yeah, I know. My heart can still be broken, believe it or not. Um, but anyway, uh, that takes us out of the news. So it's time to get out uh, that Fuber app, that Feeble Luber app. Oh, Todd, bad news about the Fuber app. There's an ad in it. Should we listen to this audio ad real quick before we move on to the Geek Easy? But it's a good ad, Charlie. It's a great ad. All right, let's check it out. Then we'll see you in the Geek Easy. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, go to Zencaster.com slash SFU and use our code SFU. And you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting at the Geek Easy, cover bands playing, drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. So, Kelly, what have you been geeking out about lately? Oh boy, uh, the Percy Jackson series is everything I could I heard, possibly I heard. ask for and more. It's um, I don't know if you two have been watching it, but I watched the first episode. So good. It if you've read the books, it's faithful to the books, but then you know they made some changes led by Rick Riordan that were really good, and. Even if you haven't read the books, if you're a fan of Greek mythology, it's Sweet. just a must watch. The cast is amazing. Just, oh, that's been amazing. Um, yeah, I, I've been rewatching a lot of stuff, a lot of comfort shows, because I've been really, really busy with <laughs> uh, editing my audiobook, which is going to be hopefully excellent. Ready. It, it's going. It's going out to my backers first, and then we'll be getting it ready for mass production. Wow. Um, awesome. And also, I've been busy with planning the multiverse fundraiser. Tell Ooh. us more. Yes, please. Yeah. Use your time. You're, so, you're up. <laughs> let's do it. So the multiverse fundraiser is a virtual convention and a charity fundraiser. So every year, we team up with a charity partner to spread awareness and raise money. The virtual convention is literally just a comic convention that's free to attend on YouTube or Facebook or the streaming. Well, now we're going to be on Instagram. So that's a new addition Ooh, this nice. year. Thank you, StreamYard. Um, it's free to attend for you all. And then we have a link to donate to our charity partner. This year's charity partner is just an awesome cause so it's comic books for kids and they also have a partner charity called comic books for troops and their mission is to uh, donate child-friendly comics to children in hospitals and cancer centers and then comic books for troops donates comics to troops and they are in all 50 united states they also are in most of Canada and they are in the UK. So just a fantastic charity. It's 
so important for kids who are going through these life-threatening illnesses to have, you know, something to distract them, something to cheer them up. Um, oh, yeah. Comics, as you all know, I, I think I'm preaching to the choir, but comics just bring hope, they bring inspiration, they bring joy. So we're we're really excited about this charity partner. We've got a ton of comic creators, we've got some celebrities, we also just got Comic-Con style programming, so we've got tons of panels with indie creators, and it is just a full weekend of Comic-Con style programming. Sweet. That's it's awesome. It's That's awesome. And when fun. when is that going to be? January 25th through the 28th. So Ooh, we have very cool. pre-recorded programming the evening of Thursday, January 25th, and then Friday, January 26th starts our live programming. So you can all tune in. You can ask questions of our celebrity guests. You can participate in the panels via basically via the comment section on the streaming site of your choice. And it is a fun time. Cool. Very exciting. That's amazing. That's amazing. So uh, by all means, folks, there will be, if you're listening to this now, the podcast notes will have all of these fine details because I will rely on Kelly to give me all the good stuff uh, to make sure you can watch, donate, and support this because this is awesome. I love this. It's fantastic. I love the fact that it's going to be accessible to so many people, which, you know, when it talks about like a lot of these events, you have to be at the physical presence. So I love the fact that you're bringing it to people and it's like, it's a no brainer. You got a couple hours to spare. Awesome. Spread it across the multiverse. Awesome. All right. Uh, Wait. So one last question. Kelly, will you be uh, 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 appearing in cosplay or anything for this too? Oh yeah. Uh, I will be appearing in cosplay for my cosplay cafe panel. And I like to just dress in cosplay when I'm uh, relevant cosplay, whenever I'm interviewing guests. And sometimes I'll just do cosplay for various panels. Love it. And Same. I will be teaching painting for one of the panels on Sunday. And then I will bust out my um, semi Bob Ross cosplay. Semi Bob Ross. I love it. <laughs> oh no. I have a wig. I have a wig. Hopefully the the headphones can How do, do you have to the put wig. the headphones underneath the wig? Go on, top of that the, work? go on top of the afro and you listen like Mark Simpson's hair. I love it. Up there. I love it. Yeah, it's good yeah. stuff. Sweet good deal. Yeah, folks. Uh definitely help support this great charity. Uh that'd be awesome. Sweet. All right. Well, uh, go to me. Um, so yesterday I was one of those idiots who said, oh, it's cold outside. So I'm going to go to the movie theaters. You know, <laughs> I, I, nobody will be there. <laughs> apparently I was not the only idiot because there was many people that were especially families who went to see Wonka. Oh. This movie is doing amazingly well, uh, oh, wow. cool. especially for a musical, which most people didn't even realize this was a musical, kind of like Mean Girls. Mean Girls, the new one, is a musical. It's based on the musical, not the movie. And yeah. a lot of people don't even realize it is. It's so weird because people are like, oh, it's a musical, won't do well. But I'm like, I think musicals do pretty well most of the time. Um, so um, this the movie with Timothy Chalamet, and this is a prequel. I normally do not like prequels, um, but in this case, this was a joy. This movie was so fun. Almost all original songs. And I will say they saved the one iconic song for a moment that I wasn't expecting. And it was perfect the way it was placed. Um, Heartfelt, uh, amazing actors they picked for this. Very British cast, uh, excluding Chalamet. Um, Like Charlie, if you ever start watching, I know you're going to talk about the show, Ghost UK. There Mm -hmm. are a ton of actors from Ghost UK in this. Oh, Ghost UK. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. The 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 um the villains are over the top silly and fun, but also kind of menacing. And uh Hugh Grant, even though he's not in this movie a lot as the Oompa Loompa, is fantastic. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a joy. And the best way I can say about this movie is how it worked. As I was leaving the theater, I heard a little boy talking to his dad and going, Oompa Loompa. Lumpety. So I'm like, oh, nice. They won. They won. They got yeah. this for kids. And I think this is a great addition to the original Willy Wonka, you know, in the Chocolate Factory. It's I think can- it adds in because you get it's to see canon. how. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's great. It's it's well done. A lot of joy. Timothy Chalamet is just so much. He's like the guy you like, even though, you know, he's kind of 
doofy, you know he's going to find a way through. He's kind of like the MacGyver right. of chocolate. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. Uh, you know what? You know what? You... Go ahead, please. I had an argument with a moron online who just insisted that musicals are not part of geek culture. Oh, what? I saw I saw your screen clip from that one. What the What? Why? Why no. why have such a such such a pointless argument? It goes it back to so uh Monty Python funny. the Holy Grail. Yeah. So they have the, the musical theme. <laughs> now Star Trek. Oh my gosh. Todd, what you just described yeah. things that he was like, oh, Oh yeah, I forgot about Rocky Horror Picture Show, but that doesn't count. Oh, oh. I forgot about this, but that doesn't uh, count. They have a song in there movie. called Science Fiction Double Feature. What could be more sci-fi than Todd, a quick sidebar about this movie, everything you described, great British cast, somewhat fun but doofusy many scene villain. It's what cats would have been like if it was good. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I I have not seen that movie, Charlie, and I won't. Oh uh, I mean, half the April, budget went to cat butt. April and I there's not one cat butt in April and I did cover that on our Patreon show, which is called the uh Bad Trip to the Movies with the Cardins, which you will hear on our feed eventually, but it is on our Patreon now if you visit patreon.com slash friends unite for a seven day free trial. Look at how I got would be surprised if people actually start making cats a thing because of Taylor Swift because she's in it and she's everything now right now. So I'm like, she's she, in that movie. She's Why isn't for, that movie like getting a, another release? She's in it saying, for five minutes. Yeah, the butthole. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's in it for five minutes at the end. Oh, she has, okay. oh, she that's has enough. A, she has a number. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. real, real bad. I will see that movie gets re-released this year and then it becomes like the number one movie in the world. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's a double feature with the Eras tour. <laughs> so, Kelly, did we cut you off at all? Because it got meme. Yes. Oh God, mm. that worked well. That worked really well uh, with Morbius. But yeah, highly recommend Wonka. Um, I don't think they have to do anything else with the franchise uh, because I think it leads into Gene Wilder. Uh, the the Johnny Depp one, that's an abomination, but we don't need to talk about that. Um, no, no. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but then uh, I I almost, uh, Charlie, I, I, I think you could say I binged Echo. We watched four of them in one setting and then went to bed and watched the fifth one the next morning. So it was like, it came out on Thursday, Tuesday? Tuesday? I, but I got home Thursday. Yeah. I got home Thursday and I was like, let's check this out. And we got sucked right into it. Then we had to go to bed, got up Friday morning, finished the last one. Totally yeah. awesome. It's excellent. I mean, I was so nervous about this when we all were, cause it's getting oh, yeah. dropped one day. I thought, Oh yeah. my God, the, the, it's going to be stinker. Yeah. Well, and they all, it, it would make me think that they didn't have confidence in this or wasn't good. Yeah. And I feel like this is the exact opposite. This feels like it takes the best of the Netflix series also adds in some of the, uh, I think more fantastical is the best yeah. way to put it. Which of I the MCU. One- 1000% did not expect. I'm like, no, nope. even from that opening sequence again, Kelly, I assume you're going to watch it sometime soon, which is why we're going spoiler free. Um, but it, the, the whole opening segment, I was like, almost wanted to back button. Am I watching the right show? <laughs> is this Eternals part two? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, what the, yeah, this, I better not see, you know, uh, some Hayek's character show up. Cause yeah, it absolutely felt like they were like, but Echo was about this, you know, kick-ass girl in the kingpin world breaking people's faces and stuff. And that's not how the show starts. That's all I'm going to. No. So trust me, when you watch the first five minutes, you'll be like pushing the info button. Like, oh, hold on. Let me which, back button here and start it again. <clears throat> which actually, quite honestly, I liked because it upset my expectations. Precisely. Which was perfect for the show. Kind of like said, we're not going to hide that there's something more to this series than, than we are. So it's it's putting it out there. But this series is amazing because oh, oh, not yeah. only did it create ASL American sign language <laughs> with respect, apparently the cast learned American sign language to speak to our, our, our main actress. Many of the people within the show all spoke ASL because they grew up with Maya. They knew her in the community. She, she goes back to Oklahoma essentially to hide out. This is a essentially a direct sequel to uh, Hawkeye. Yeah. Where, you know, which is cool. I like that too. I wasn't sure where this was going to take place. And um, I think the other part is this dealt with, uh, she is uh, Choctaw. And mm-hmm. in Oklahoma, dealt with that. She was back in Oklahoma, and it dealt with the culture in a way that is amazing. Right, uh, oh, blew, blew uh, really off, effective. Off, yeah, yeah. And this is a new take on Echo. So Echo in the comics, really, her power is basically like Taskmaster. She could echo abilities and do right. those. She does not have that ability in here. Yeah, um, she's a trained fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I also want to say the cast 
is amazing. Biscuits made me laugh my butt off. <laughs> he's a goof. He's fun. The uh, uh, Russ, I can't remember the name of the um, ex boyfriend of the grandma. He's an oh, iconic. I know yeah, he's an actor. iconic Native American actor uh, that you see, and he's he's a that guy. And yeah, it's it's on the tip of my tongue. I know I know who you're talking about. And he was absolutely hilarious and funny. And I love the fact that this didn't feel like oh, it's going to be like all up its own butt about Native American culture. True, it, no, it was they did it was, avoid that. It was very good, but it also said these are real people that that aren't just that's their only thing. They have a real right. people. Um, and I love the and I tell you the other part. The action sequences with Maya, she is a badass. I right. mean, I sometimes struggle with people and how they do choreography and fight. She owns it. You feel Big the time. pain, and she is amazing. So I, I cannot say enough good things about this show. Um, it makes me feel more positive when we get more of this influence with Marvel going forward. Um, but yeah, can't say enough, Kelly. Yeah, highly recommend it. Marvel, Marvel needed a hit with, without a doubt. Yeah, so I absolutely enjoy it. This is one. This is one I would say of Marvel post end game um that you would actually want to go back to you would yeah. watch and be like oh my god that was so good but where something like the eternals you wouldn't touch with the 10 foot pole you know which was it was some of their other films uh they were just like eh, i don't really see watching this one again it was hard to get through it the first time um yeah but go watch it uh let's keep the conversation going after you do that let's talk on instagram let's talk on uh threads let's talk on socials about this because uh, uh i am all for the show because they you know they they, they had to have a hit because they've been batting low um and this one got knocked out of the park. yeah oh i will say though what if season two has been very like, true i need to finish that i'm on like the last two episodes oh really you were on the last two episodes like two weeks ago come on man. i know i know it's coming finish it's it up finish it up all right well i'll take us out of here pretty succinctly uh i saw a couple of different things uh including todd loves this anytime i watch something todd watched in the past he thinks it's because of him i'm sorry babe <laughs> Oh, Th this is where it came from. Uh, uh, April are like, but let's watch something light. All right. Well, we haven't been to Paramount Plus in a while, even though that's where we watch Colbert. It's where we watch the, da the Daily Show's not back yet, which is weird. Hopefully they're back this week. But we I, and that's where all the Star Treks are. So ghosts got thrown up in front of me. I'm like, ghosts. Oh, this seems familiar. And it's got the check for my zombie. And oh, Todd must have talked about it at some point. We watched it five or six episodes in. Totally digging it. Totally digging it. Two oh, seasons yes, out there. No. Season three okay. starts in like three weeks. Uh, and it's on CBS. It's a, it's a terrestrial sitcom, which I can't tell you another one that I watch. I really don't have another. Not young, not young Sheldon? God, no. I caught that in the, I was saying in a, in a hotel earlier this week where they had a lobby TV that was on. And I'm like, how quickly can I get out of the lobby to get away from young Sheldon? <laughs> I, want old, I want old Sheldon. Next give me, a senior yeah, citizen. Give me old. Yes. Yeah. They, there's your, it's like after mash, uh, before mash, excuse the me. The next after, generation. Yeah. <laughs> before mash. And it's just I yeah. read an article that they're thinking about doing a big bang theory spinoff with Sheldon's brother. He what? I, oh. He had a sister. He has a sister now. Does he have a brother? Or his, I, don't I think he has know. a sister. A he definitely has a sister. One of yeah. his siblings. Talk about like, why? It, it's turned into NCIS. The you Sheldon know. verse. Yeah, it's the NCIS because now there's one in Australia, which yeah. April and I watched an episode of, and it was god awful. Big Bang Theory, Utica. U yeah, Utica, <laughs> Michigan, not Michigan, not New York. Sheboygan. Yeah, <laughs> Sheboygan. Yeah, Shakopee. Why? Why? But the thing, money, I mean, money, it, money, it, Kelly. It's it is. Always it, money. It's all. It, it's the old model. It's ad revenue. It has. You know. It's not about quality content. It's about the masses enjoying something that's terrible. But anyway, if you love Young Sheldon and would like to like to hit us up on Threads and Instagram and tell us how stupid we are, that would be great. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> enjoying the show. There's also. <clears throat> and it, Todd, it spun off of a UK version. Those seasons, a couple of those seasons are out there as well. So I'm sure we'll move on to that as uh, that too. Really but good. anyway, yep. uh, it's on Paramount Plus. Hopefully you have Paramount Plus. Um, next, I watched a uh, direct to streaming movie that is being that has been talked up for weeks and weeks on a podcast I love. So it's kind of like, hey, I want to support a podcast I love. Um, years ago, my sister in law turned me on to a show called The Dollop, which is done by these two comedians. Um, the first guy's name I'm forgetting because the second guy is on a show with comedian and actor Jake Johnson. The, 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 the first guy's name is Gareth Reynolds. It's on a show called We Can Help, which is just it's a satirical radio call in show where someone calls up with their problem and these two guys just slice and dice it. And for about the last six weeks, 
Jake Johnson talking about this this direct to Hulu film that I saw today had been talking about it and bringing on guests like Andy Samberg, Natalie Morales, other, you know, other people who are guesting with him on it. So it came out on Friday. I was jazzed up to watch it because I'm like, I want to you know, want to be there to support the show I love. It was moronic. It was moronic. Uh, yeah, Andy Samberg uh, did actually appear as, as himself. Um, they didn't give him a ton to do. The whole movie had to do with. Uh, Jake Johnson's character was written and directed by him. It was at least written by him, if I'm not mistaken. But he was this down on his luck, sad sack, uh, who is back living, you know, who, a, a guy who around a little younger than us, but you know, aroundish our age. But he and his long, he and his lifelong girlfriend broke up, and he's you know down on his luck, back living with his mom. And Andy Samberg, as himself, picks him up in a limo and said, "You've been selected to be on this show where for 30 days." assassins are trying to kill you but they can only kill you when you're alone so it turns into him finding ways to you know he puts an ad on craigslist and that's how he meets uh a young woman played by anna kendrick and there's that whole it's just it just wasn't good it just wasn't Aww. good and it's yeah it would bum me out because i love these guys yeah um but this just did not it didn't knock the doors off you know, and even April was watching it like, you know, April's listening to the podcast with me a couple of times. She's like, I enjoy it, but this is just, this is not funny. Um, so, you know, um, uh, I will say, looking right into the camera, Jake, I supported you. Uh, I subscribed to Hulu. I love you. I can't wait to continue to listen to your show, but this just did not do it for me. But I hope you have success. Well, you won, Charlie, because you talked about it and you watched it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So he did win. So I'm glad that he won. I wish I liked it more, but I but I really didn't. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it. Sorry. Uh, okay. And then to conclude, I've mentioned a couple of times, I'm back on the Star Wars train. I tend to go in cycles with my fandom. I go Marvel, Star Trek. Well, Star Trek is now year round because of Code 47 our uh, our star trek podcast here on this network and then star wars and star wars is tougher because you know ahsoka was the last new thing i feel like we might have for a good long time but then again it's kind of that way with all franchises right now because of the six month writer's strike there's nothing got produced and so everything got pushed out but i caught a bug something related to i can't even remember what got it started but i oh i just i just wanted to watch the, the season finale of Mando, season two again with Luke Skywalker because I love it so much. And then I'm like, well, now I'll watch those couple episodes of the book of Boba Fett Mando was in, but not the rest of it because no way. Uh, and then I watched season three of Mando. And, you know, I found it, you know, Todd, I know that it was your big disappointment of 23, but, you know, watching it again, you know, I it harkens back to my regular partner uh, over on Code 47. And Kelly, she's a friend of yours, Jen Watson, who's with me on with us almost every week, has said, you know, I love Star Trek, she always says, but you know what? <clears throat> I don't necessarily say I hate this or I can't stand this because I try to pluck something good out of every segment or little series or whatever it is. And so <clears throat> I tried to watch Mando season three with that eye. And you know what? I plucked some good stuff out of it. Some of it was still as frustrating as potentially it was that first time around, but I enjoyed it more than I did. <clears throat> and now I'm back around to watch and I started season one again. And, and it got me thinking about wanting to get out and do some Star Wars cosplay. So I've been talking to some people about that. And Kelly would love to have you on board. We'll, we'll talk more offline. But uh, um, even with Star Wars, <clears throat> you know, not sure when the next. Charlie, are you Sling Blade? <laughs> French rap potatoes uh, in space. <laughs> uh, no, <clears throat> I just get very, I get very emotional talking about Star Wars. Um, but anyway, uh, I have, yeah, I haven't even um, been able to be on with Mark, unfortunately, for the last couple of weeks uh, for uh, Holocron. So I don't have a lot of new Star Wars news to bring you, but I'm in a Star Wars space right now. I've been enjoying, oh, I've been enjoying the comics. Todd and I talked about that, that they're, it's kind of on a good arc right now. And Star Wars Marvel comics are very, it's very peaks and valleys. Could be really, really bad, or they could do something really interesting. And right now I think they're doing something kind of interesting with Luke's journey between Empire and Return of the Jedi. So anyway, that's me. Um, so with that, uh, Todd, it's time to wrap up our time at the geek easy. We're skipping out on the drink yet again. Again, uh, we had to sneak in here because they, they have our faces on the door. Like don't take checks from these guys. Um, but got to get out that uh, air Qantas app. It's time to get to the land down under hologram. Tina and the mutants are waiting for us as we play that SFU classic pitch meeting. Let's do it. Thank you, Tina. The means have been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained. 
And this week, we're pulling out the old game where we come up with great ideas based on some selections that each person uh, picks for our pitcher. So basically, the person is going to have to be given a, a variety of uh, different uh, areas of focus for a movie or TV series. Those are going to be a setting, a genre, antagonist, and a protagonist name. And that person that is pitching the idea has to develop that idea based on those four selections and bonus points for a title, obviously, and then actors or anything else. So we'll go with that. Um, so basically, we each have our own selections of the various topics. And the way we're going to come up with the selections is I will say, and Charlie's going first to pitch to me, I will say, Charlie, uh, select between 2 and 11. Give me a right. number. And each of the four uh, categories has 11 selections, so that, that part will be the same. Correct. So <laughs> we're starting, Charlie. So 2 through 11 for setting. Okay. That I'm giving you? Yep. No, okay. no, no. You're pitching to me. Oh, so you're giving me a number. Yes. No, no. Okay. You give me a number. That's what I just <laughs> said. You, yes. Well, you see, we're, all, we're already in deep Give shit. me a number. Okay. So give me a number. Oh, so your setting number is eight. It's your setting number, not mine. Oh, my God. Uh, My setting number is eight. <laughs> there you go. Um, your genre number. My genre number will be three. Your antagonist number. My antagonist number will be 11. And your protagonist name. My protagonist name will be two. Two. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So, Charlie, you'll be pitching to me either a movie or TV property that includes the following. Okay. Um, the setting is Monstertopia. Monstertopia. The genre is fantasy. Oh, my favorite. Yes. Uh, your antagonist is aliens. Alien fa alien fantasy. That's that sounds like only fans. Watch out. And your protagonist name is Ingrid von Blast. Ingrid von Blast. All right. So. <clears throat> Uh, in this 1978 fantasy film, uh, that is a, it's a prequel to aliens. Oh my God. It read light right into alien, which came out in 1979. So it's alien, not aliens, but, uh, there is a colony of man. Uh, that it's actually where the Nostromo, which was the freighter and alien is going to now you didn't know this maybe they used a code name or whatever it is but it's going to this place called monstertopia okay it's uh it's in the next star system away from earth and uh you think that gosh i don't know where did uh those face huggers really come from you thought it was the guy sitting on the big table all blah, but you know what no it was really it was this place right here it was monstertopia there is a crazy lab uh where your uh evil corporation Monster Topia and Spices and Tire Repair Incorporated is creating a new life form. Okay. In this new life form, uh, it's kind of like if somebody was growing a mosquito. It has no purpose and all it does is destroy. Well, the the, the this becomes our xenomorph alien, okay? Um Naturally, kind of like Jurassic Park, people are like, it, you know, it's it's not, can we do a thing? It's not, should we do a thing? It's, could we do a thing? Anyway, they shouldn't be doing it because the xenomorphs break out of the Monstertopia and tire repair and whatever the hell it is I said, lab, and they run amok. And uh, this very innocent young schoolgirl, Ingrid Van Blast of the uh, Van Blast uh, Beer Hat uh, Consortium fandom uh finds herself in a situation where she must take up arms and destroy the xenomorph population and the star of this film is an ai composite of the three actors who may be playing supergirl so who was that uh i don't remember their names now um but it's the three of them uh so there's your bonus points for an actor name times three uh but it does have ai but uh no xenomorphs the xenomorphs are all practical effects and money was given to a local um animal rescue shelter uh so it's good publicity because ai is is bad so which yeah even though it was 1978 uh, where th when this was made, uh, AI was then put on dust until recently. So the technology has always been around. It's it's incredible. All right, how'd I do? Um, well, I'm going to deduct 
points because there were no fantasy elements of this. <laughs> I mean, it's fantastical that it's on a planet where there's uh, uh, and and it went backwards in time. Uh, all right, fine, you got me. Yep, I, I would say deducting points. Uh, did you have a title for this thing? Uh, it was Monstertopia Xenomorphs um, Weekend at Van Blast. Uh, Kelly, you can weigh in too. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know if we're going to agree. I don't, I, Charlie, I'm going to say, um, I appreciate your passion. Um, but you might want to workshop this one. Uh, all right. All right. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. All right. All right. That's fine. I'll take it. Get I'll take it. Writers. Yeah. yeah. Kelly, what, what a typically, uh, you know, when you're pitching to a uh, publisher, you know, when they, when they're trying to be nice to you, what do they typically say? Nothing. Uh, there you go. That's so we'll, right. say, we'll say we'll say keep we'll keep it positive, Charlie. We'll because say, say. because what what's the old expression? No news is no news. <laughs> yes, exactly. No news is bad news. Yeah. <laughs> mm, my postage was returned. Oh boy. <laughs> no longer is no longer at this address. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no return to sender. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, obviously, I need to I need to go back to the drawing board on this. All right. What what who's next? What what happens next? I believe. Uh, I think. Uh, cause Charlie, you're, you're, well, um, Charlie, you are uh, going to be judging Kelly. So, uh, I believe, um, Kelly, you, you are, to me. yeah, I pitch into you. So, okay. uh, okay. so Kelly, go to your tab and make me choose my numbers. Okay. Choose your numbers. You're giving me numbers, right? I will. Yeah. You tell me to pick and I'll give you the numbers. Yep. Okay, go for pick your setting number. I'm going to go with magic number six. All right, that is Ninjaville. Ninjaville. Woo. Oh boy, best of the Vills. All right, pick your genre number. I'm going to go with nine. All right, that is fantasy. Oh, don't get oh. it wrong this time. <laughs> <laughs> what was that again? Oh, um, okay. Uh, and pick your antagonist number. Uh, I'm going to go with three. All right. Aliens. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We're kind of... <laughs> Is this a redo on Charlie's? <laughs> oh, this could be... A, it's could... No. It could, this could be my redemption arc. It's okay. all aliens all the time for, for pitch meeting. Yeah. So many okay. aliens. All right. Um, and then pick your number for your protagonist. I'm going to go with 10. All right. 10 is Claudia Wolfsbane. Well, there you go. Okay. Okay. That's a little bit better. Claudia Wolfsbane. Okay. Could be, that could be a, 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 a you know, a, a red herring or a, a, you know, a plot I device that's supposed you. to distract you. Yeah, I'm stealing that for a novel. There you go. You can take any of these, Kelly. I won't even charge you. Please you take. You can have all of these. Please just credit me. Just credit me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please, or yes. not discredit me, but credit me to say, you know. Please um, take Ninja no. Will because that's the winner of the. Of Inspired the by the wing beneath my wings, Todd Oxtra. <laughs> I love Ninja um, A yeah, blurb I, somewhere. I, I'll, give, I'll give you credit. Claudia Bring on down to Ninja Will. <laughs> I'm just gonna change my yeah. name to Claudia Wolf Spain legally. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There. I, I I was thinking about changing my name to Joey Handshake. That's Joey one of the characters. Handshake. Lance Manley All has right. always been the one I've wanted. Jaden Butterbeer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love well, these lay names. It on me. Okay. So um this is going to be an animated film. Um Think of uh, this is going to be by the people that made um, Mitchell's versus the machines. So you can kind of got a feel for that. So um, this is going to be about Claudia Wolfsbane. Um, she is part of a family of werewolf killers, but she doesn't want to be a werewolf killer. She actually really likes werewolves and writes fan fiction about them. So she is a disappointment to the family. They're like, what are you doing? You know, you know, we, we, so it's one of those things where she's always felt like there's gotta be a better way. I want to really be a ninja. So she decides that she is going to, when she hits 18, she is going to, you know, drop out of uh, werewolf uh, university 
and go over to, uh, you know, n- basically three states over is Ninjaville. And Ninjaville has her favorite ninjas. She loves the art of ninjutsu. Uh, she loves the costume. That's what she cosplays as. And people are like, what are you even doing? Uh, that's disrespectful to werewolf hunters. So she decides that's what she's going to do. She's going to pack up her bags go there, ride, you know, ride her unicorn because it's a fantasy movie. Um, oh, you know. that's it's a unicorn. That could have sealed the deal for me. Yep. Damn so, it. so she's taking her, her buddy unicorn, who's also kind of like her comedic sidekick. So they have funny jokes. Chewbacca. You, you know, yeah. the, 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 the unicorn farts uh, rainbows. Um, it's that's, great. That's, that's uh, how it's powered, right? Exactly. You know, uh, has the power to um, the, 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 the unicorn horn. Um, is basically kind of like a riff on uh, uh, on Rudolph, but it actually is like a disco ball. I was thinking it, Rudolph as you were talking about yeah. this. They yeah. really, it's kind of anyway, vibe, so. Yeah. So they're they're partners, but you know, this is the thing where basically she shows up and Ninjaville's in tatters, and she doesn't know why. Um, but she sees all of these um, these eggs lying around that have been opened. She <gasps> doesn't know what xenomorphs. On. So she finds. Uh, uh, basically, uh, she sees all around her like these shadowy figures, and she's not sure what it is. And then she finally comes upon the surviving uh, town members of Ninjaville, and they look like they've been beaten up. So, um, but the the leader of the town uh, has survived, and they captured one of the aliens in, and they're trying to study it, see what it is, and um, they actually end up befriending it. Um, and it, it kind of becomes like Stranger Things, you know, with the with the Demogorgon baby, kind of like that, uh, but less gross. Um, and so they realize that their skills uh, and just ninja alone aren't enough to take out the aliens. So it becomes a hybrid where the werewolf hunting skills that Claudia discovered are being bled into ninja skills. So they basically combine into a hybrid uh, skills of uh, it, so basically becomes. Um, Wolfja, and they create a new martial arts called Wolfja. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like a, and, it's, a, it's like a dance craze. Yeah, so they essentially, so she gets, uh, you know, we get a we get a uh, uh, a montage of her training. Uh, her she learns ninja skills. She trains them. Yeah, gotta have a montage. montage. Even rock ahead, a montage. Exactly, and then she is when she they fully accept her. They give her her ninja outfit but it is specific to her own heritage as a wolf hunter so she's got um all the accoutrement of the wolf hunter people like the you think of like bandoleros so she can have like uh things and because um they're not really you know there's nothing to kill aliens we find out that um the aliens are affected by uh sickness because somebody's got cold so they end up like securing a sneeze into like little bombs or like little ninja, you know, those smoke bombs that ninjas use that's full of uh, sickness and, and flu or whatever. To, uh, and, or or alternate, hey, could they just be full of farts? Because th- everybody's got a weakness. To sure. That. Yeah. That's another weakness of the aliens is unicorn yeah. farts. So, oh, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, so they put it in those little bombs it, and it, then they it, make. It, it yeah. seems like you turn an easier laugh for that. Yeah. So that's all Instead of throwing stars, they use like throwing um, like almost like nerf those nerf boomerangs. Or maybe star, those. maybe yeah. starfish could be yeah. yeah so so that thing and then everything comes together uh the news comes out that uh claudia helped save ninjaville her family hears about it and the acceptor and actually the two towns decide that they're more successful if they blend their cultures together and three states apart so, so gotcha. and the, and the name the of this movie is called and uh, enter the wolf jaw a coming of age story for the masses top show how did i, I do kelly I am signing you. Rubber stamp it. Feel good holiday movie of the year. Stop drilling. You've hit oil. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Awesome. Uh, So Kelly, uh, so basically it's your turn. Charlie. uh, Well, Kelly, you'll have, you'll pick your numbers based on Charlie's list. All right, Charlie, two for the setting. Your setting is Burgerville, which was a video game from the <laughs> 80s, wasn't it? <laughs> burger, yeah. Uh, burger time, burger time. Burger time and okay. also right. a good burger. All right, your genre right. number four. will be lucky number seven. 
Oh, are you picking numbers for me? Okay. Oh, shit. Number I'm sorry. Seven. I got thrown off. <laughs> Your lucky number is not seven. I got very confused. All right. Uh, yeah, give me a number for genre. Four. Uh, space epic. Oh, yes. All right. Number six for the the next one for the antagonist. Uh, oh, man. The military slash government. So right, sad nobody my, picked Evil Corporation. I would have been fired up about that. Oh, well. My protagonist name is Eight. The protagonist is called, oh, this is perfect for you, Angel Devil Kiss. <laughs> Go! Yes. Thank very, goodness very... you got, like, new, 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 new things to talk about, because if you got aliens and <laughs> those again, be like, oh, crap. <laughs> All right. So we have Burgerville, Space Epic, and Government, Military, and Angel Devil Kiss. All right. So let's do this. We are going to go with Burgers from Outer Space for a title. And Angel Devil Kiss is from Burgerville in a world. Where all the burgers are from outer space, <laughs> and, um, and the burgers eat people. <laughs> and Rand McNally. <laughs> <laughs> Burgerville is a colony on Mars, and it is run by the military. <sighs> Evil military. Basically, Angel Devil Kiss is just a citizen of Burgerville working in. The military version of McDonald's. And everything seems fine. Everything military seems McDonald's. Fine. Oh, I love it. Commandant well, Grimace. Who else can colonize Mars? Okay. That's true. Right. They need. They're running out of locations. They need Grimace. Yeah, it's going to be uh, Mars. Brought to you by McDonald's and Amazon. <laughs> so, you know what they 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 think that it's just. The U.S. military has colonized Mars. They think it's a peaceful mission until they realize that the military has discovered that there are Martians living under the ground. And the military does not have peaceful intentions towards the Martians. And they also realize that the ingredients of the burgers are not cows. <gasps> it's Soylent Green Martians. The secret sauce. <laughs> it's the it's Martian secret. Sauce. Oh, the, the secret. The, it's no longer a secret. <clears throat> no longer a secret. So Angel, you know, started out as like this apathetic teenager, but befriends a Martian and starts to get empathy for the Martian race. Cause you know, like it was their, it was their home first. Hello. And Angel starts to get radicalized and wants to protect the Martians realizes that the military and the government is kind of effed up and angel's like okay we're gonna lead a rebellion we're gonna help the martians take back their planet we're gonna find a way for us to coexist because obviously at this point we've colonized mars so the martians don't really want to kick us off their planet they they just want to coexist they just want to live they don't want to be made into burgers okay like that's gross also humans do not want to eat martian burgers Wow, McDonald's produced a product somebody doesn't want to eat and feed to their kids to shut them up? <clears throat> we got McDonald's at home. <laughs> and also for funsies, um, there is an evil grimace running around, like, the, you know, the TikTok grimace, Jake? Oh, yeah. Trend. Oh. There's, to there's totally an evil grimace running around. Like, Grimace is one of the antagonists. So, you know, they, they, they got to contend with evil grimace, who is on the military bankroll. I was going to say, you know, and is calling him an evil grimace implies that there is a, a benevolent <laughs> grimace, grimace out there. And I just, I, I just, I don't know if I can suspend my belief in that direction. Oh, <laughs> the grimace. Yeah. Uh, so Kelly, do you have a title? Oh, she started with the title. Oh, yeah, what was the title again? Outer Space. Burgers, Burgers from Outer Space. Burgers. That's right. Okay. Burgers from Outer Space. All right. Oh. So how'd I do? I thought excellent. Uh, I, I loved oh. it. I adore. Oh, I, I absolutely adored it. Uh, again, you know, Todd did. Uh, he, he did pop Grimace's name in there, but you ran with it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, 
I would, if I was to give a note, I would say maybe developing a subplot where we figure out that Grimace could be an agent for good, which I have traditionally never been able to believe. Um, He's could a be, double agent. Yeah, could could be a way that in the end, him, uh, he, or, or it, uh, and Angel Devil Kiss uh, somehow function together, but then Grimace has to make like the ultimate sacrifice. Maybe you see two Grimaces <laughs> grappling, and then Thanos shows up. I don't know. There's just there's Kelly. Kelly, this is where like you're like the studio is taking your idea and like yeah, it oh, isn't even my idea anymore. What exactly. are you doing? Oh boy, yeah, just leave <laughs> Thanos out of it. But anyway, I think it has a great opportunity um, to delight uh moviegoers everywhere and to put more money into the pockets of mcdonald's which clearly they need because they're not doing so good because there's two thousand mcdonald's in 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 this state alone <laughs> or mcdonald's it. will sue the pants off me for showing them in a negative right. you can use McDo- in which case McDo- they'll still make Mc- money what is it mcdougall's or Mc- oh, mcdowell's <laughs> yeah. from uh, McDowell's. america yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, or it's a big, it's an upside down M, just a yeah. W. You can call it, you know, Wonder Woman Burgers, and then Whack gets Donald's. then gets <laughs> then get Whack Arnold's. That was the one from Chappelle's yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is well, great! I love it. Great job, everybody. And Kelly's an author, so you know it, it, she's got ideas constantly right. running it through her head. So this is perfect. Right. And Kelly, uh, by the way, these ideas are all trademarked by all of us. So right. by the way, uh, guys. You can't steal any of our ideas. They're right. owned by us, trademarked. E- right Evil now. Grimace, good Grimace, and now we own Thanos. It was, I don't know how we pulled it off. It was spectacular. Well, well it's Thanos, like anus. Thane, th- <laughs> like, like anus? Anus? Oh, that's my exactly. goodness. Well, uh, that's the end of the show. Um, Kelly, so great to have you on board. Yes. You've been, you are not only uh, a great contributor to the show, but you're also one of our cherished patrons. It's not like we have all of our Patreons on uh, to host, but we love it when uh, when one of our biggest supporters shows up. So uh, you were telling us about the Multiverse Fundraiser. We're going to have that information uh, up there. But where do people find you outside of that? Where else do you live uh, in the virtual world? Um, so linktree.com slash cosplay has all my goods. Otherwise, you can go directly to my website, kellygetner.com, K-E-L-L-Y-G-U-E-N-T-N-E-R. You can find information about my cosplay, my books, information about the Multiverse Fundraiser, all my fun little projects. So those are a few places to find me. I'm pretty much everywhere. I'm the Energizer Bunny of cosplay and fandom. (laughs) Totally awesome. I love it. And Todd, where are you at these days? Oh, I am at uh, Threads, at Tioxtra, at Secret Friends Unite, also on a Twitter, at Tioxtra, and at Secret Friends U, just kind of keeping presence all over the place. But obviously, Discord is the place to be. We want more people to join us, have good discussions about all the world of geek. We love it. We post goofy stuff out there, but we also have things about cooking, tech, um, collectibles, even cosplay people, you know, or even if you make content, you want to share it with people, the discord's a place to be. So if you have questions about that, let us know. Hit us up. Yes. I do spend quite a bit of time uh, over on the discord as well, but you can find me on threads and on Instagram, uh, C3 Carpenter, spell it out. Uh, but most of the time, uh, my lovely wife and I are running the USS Graham Petoskey, one of the biggest chapters of the international Star Trek fan club in the world. We are based here in West Michigan, uh, but I do have the privilege of running region 13 for SFI that is Michigan and Eastern Canada. If you're a trekker within the sound of my voice and would like to learn more, uh, give a Google to our region 13 website. You can visit also visit SFI.org or the USS Grand Petoskey website and find us on various socials and we can pair you up with trekkers in your community. With that, friends, as always, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. Burgers are not people. They're aliens. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.